Oh, hi, everyone. Oh, we started on time. Great. Um, welcome to the webinar. I know some of you have been with us uh, for the two previous ones and uh, all just for the for the one that we literally ended uh, five minutes ago on the indices. And now we are going to be look, looking at stocks, um, stock trading. I have put investing in, but stock trading. But I'll explain later. There's an awful lot we want to try and get through today. But before we start, as usual, let me go and find it. Sorry. <laughs> David's laughing at me. Oh, I would have to sit on the front end. Oh, fine. <laughs> yes, but I have to say it's in live. Um, this is recorded and you know, the disclaimer always does come up in the recording. But those of you who come along regularly and I'm sure go to other webinars as well, you know you will, seen, you will have seen variations of this. As you know, trading can be a very risky business. So please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. For those of you coming along for the first time, we're going to look at the charts uh, the analysis of the charts through the prism of what we call volume price analysis, and it's the this intimate relationship between price action and a volume. And the best way to understand the the concepts is to actually see it on the on the charts. But I suppose if you I had to sort of boil it down, you would what you're looking for is you're looking for anomalies. You're looking for those um, those uh, areas on the chart. The, the 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 price action is developing, but it's not being supported by the requisite amount of volume. In other words, the move is not genuine. That's what um, you're looking for all the time. And uh, just to help explain what we mean by anomalies and the kind of signals that we look for, uh, the book has a companion where there are 200 worked examples drawn from stocks, commodities, and some indices. There is also a version for the Forex market because this methodology is applicable doesn't matter what you trade, you know, a chart is a chart. Doesn't matter. It, there's a crypto book on Amazon as well. And today it's a very big day for the crypto market because it's the Coinbase IPO. So goodness, the market is getting uh, terribly excited over that. I mean, there's talk that uh, Coinbase is going to have a bigger valuation than Goldman Sachs. Wow. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Has it been, um, I don't know this is actually, has it been launched yet? It's usually at the open. Uh, perhaps a little bit later. It's usually about half past 10. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right. So there we are. Volume price analysis. This is the little house analogy that we use. Volume, price action, candle. We use candles. Patterns. Patterns are hugely important. And support and resistance. Support and resistance. Really, support and resistance lines. If you want me to, it, it, how you draw them on your chart is up to you. We use price-based and we use volume-based. We use Camarilla. And as I said, we use volume-based based on the volume point of control, which you will see on the chart. But what they actually do support and resistance, they, they tell you on the chart where those areas are so important to other traders and to the market. And what they also do is they then, if they develop over a period of time, they then, if you like, there's a supply and demand, supply, you know, it's where it's where price is going to perhaps reverse. And if it doesn't reverse, it's going to congest. So, you know, it's you can interpret support and resistance in a number of different ways. You can measure it in another in another a number of different ways. But essentially what it's you know what you're looking for in these zones is is the price going to either break away from here or is it going to reverse? There's really just two questions that you need an answer to. And talking about support and resistance and congestion and trends, um, I'm going to go to stocks, but I just wanted to show this chart because this is a kind of dilemma that can happen when a market or a stock is in a very strong uptrend. And you've missed, you know, you've missed the beginning of the trend. You've missed the middle of the trend. And, you know, and when a market is in a strong uptrend, the temptation, the, the, the narrative is, oh, it's got to reverse. It's got to reverse. It's great. Well, yes, it will reverse. But, you know, not necessarily. It, it's because no one likes to jump, you know, no one likes to chase price as it is, as it is uh, uh, 
called. But if you understand trends, if you understand Wyckoff's three laws, if you understand volume price analysis in terms of pullbacks, so this is a primary trend. This is just happens to be the YM on on the day. So you know you can see it's in a in a in 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 a trend higher. The only thing I would say about this at the moment, and I mentioned it in the previous one, the volume at the moment under all these indices is not fantastic. Does that mean the price can't go higher? No, it means it can it can go higher. Markets go up, can drift higher on not a lot of volume. When you're looking for a big reversal, what you're actually looking for is you're looking for narrow spreads, but you're looking for tons of volume to go in. That is the, one of the, the key anomalies where you are likely to get a reversal. There's a lot of effort going in, but not a lot of result. At the moment, we're getting quite a good result for not a lot of effort. It is anomalous. Does that mean it can't go higher? No. Now, as a trader, in a way, it doesn't matter because you as a trader, your time horizon is maybe it's a day. It could be a couple of days, but it's very, very short. As an investor, it's more critical because you think, well, you know, you're looking to hold something for longer term. That is the only difference between a trader and investor is that really how long are you going to hold a particular asset or an, an, an instrument? But to get a view of what I mean by an anomalies, um, and there's some really nice examples on the indices, and, and this is just the daily chart, and I'm using the daily chart because as historical, because you will you need to see this, you will see this in the faster time frames. You can see here this this sort of arching um, uh, a type of price action, sort of catenary price action. It's kind of drifting higher, but the volume was you know, noticeably falling away. So we kind of know that it's kind of running out of steam. That's what it's known as, it's running out of steam. And that's one of the things that you can look for, particularly when something is moving very, very strongly higher. Now, back on the, on, on down at the, at the coal face, if you like, of this, this price action that we have at the moment on the, this is the, um, the, the equivalent of the, this is the US 30, of the Dow Jones, this is the futures for the Dow Jones. Well, it's going higher because um, the, the NASDAQ is kind of not lagging a bit. Uh, there's this thing about uh, this rotation into value, et cetera, et cetera. But this is earnings season, and earnings season is expected to come in absolutely stellar. And I think we've had, is it Wells Fargo, one of the banks has reported today. Banks will always do well uh, when interest rates are on the rise because they only, as I said before, they only have one product, and that's debt. <laughs> so if they've got, if they, you know, people want to pay for debt, they've got to pay, they've got to pay more. So this is this trend higher. Uh, on the on the YM, this is the uh, a couple of things I want to mention here. This is obviously Globex. This is a 24-hour version. Uh, this is a 24-hour uh, contract, and you can see here we've had a, a congestion. As I said earlier, a price will move a break from uh, congestion. Or when you have a, you're in a trend, you have a pullback, and in that pullback, you want to see what the volume is. Is the volume, uh, if it's falling, then you know the trend is likely to continue higher. So this is your primary trend, and you're looking at the, what the secondary trends are. Now I know in this one you can see it go higher, 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 and actually the the the, the volume is is falling away, and you think, well, okay, well, why hasn't it reversed yet? You have to bear in mind the time. The time at the moment is this is the open. So you this volume is slightly um, not misleading. It's distorted by the inrush of the physical open but it will it will settle down and the anomalies will come around now this is um this is my five minute chart this is my 15 minute chart where i have my camarilla levels hopefully i can expand it for you and as i said the third it actually chewed right through the third the fourth it looks like it's going through the fourth as well and it just gives me the 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 targets if you like for uh, for the price. Now, the, the hourly chart is, is extremely interesting because the values on the hourly chart are stay on this chart for the rest of the week. And what's interesting is, in fact, we're it's kind of between the S3 of this week and where is this going to aim for if it's going to carry on higher? Well, it's certainly going to get try and get to the R3 at the moment. We've also had a volatility candle triggered 
often means that will we retreat it will slow things down this is a huge this is that huge momentum that we saw on the five minute chart that's the volume underneath it which is uh, what you would expect what i also have under here is i have the dollar yen the dollar yen is a great proxy for risk and it, they're kind of moving together and that tells me that they are in congestion so we could get a congestion on the YM as well but certainly in terms of where it's heading for the R3 is the key to uh, um, to the upside for this um, um, for this particular instrument and of course you know what the Renko does it gives you a geometric look at uh, this particular piece of price action. We can see the kind of choppy price action that we had here. We can see the trend monitor dipping in and out of, of the different colors. But as I said, there's two ways of joining this. You either wait for a break of uh, the, the congestion, the breakaway, which was actually down here at the R2, and then definitely a, a, a strong breakaway at the R3, and this is the move higher. And we just, what the Renko does, it keeps you in, and it gives you the levels that this is likely to be heading to. Right, that's kind of a little bit of a, of offered a tangent because I've actually got quite a lot to share with you today on stock selection. Those of you who've been coming regularly will know that I've actually, what I've mentioned was we need to try and find a, a way of picking stocks for different reasons either for trading for investing you will have different criteria now in the forex program and the reason i'm mentioning the forex program is not only do you have to learn chart analysis through vpa but there are two other elements in the forex program one is the fundamental um the fundamental releases that impact the individual currencies and currency pairs for stocks, they are the fundamental metrics of the stocks themselves, and you know there are there are a myriad of those. And you think, oh my goodness, you know, what am I going to, you know, what do I pay attention to? And that's what I want to try and narrow down for you uh, the ones that I think you you should perhaps have a, a bit of a handle on. And what I've done is I've put together some resources, some free resources, which you can go away and you can put your stock into one, perhaps that you are, you know, maybe maybe you like to trade Apple, maybe you maybe you like to trade, a, um, um, you know, a, a low float stock. It's entirely up to you, but you will get those, you know, at least get a handle on what these metrics mean. And the third element of our Forex program is what we call related markets. And that is what is going on in the other markets other than the one that you are trading because certainly in forex there are certain currencies that are the, the drivers for those currencies it won't just be uh, the fundamental releases but also the sen the general sentiment in the market so to give you an example aussie dollar the aussie dollar will rise if there is risk on and also it's very very heavily tied to commodities now to to relate that back to stocks there are certain, as I mentioned earlier, there are certain stocks that are going to perform better, certain sectors that are going to be stronger at certain times of the economic and business cycle. And the way to look at, uh, and I've got a fantastic resource to share with you, to do with sectors, because what you're doing is you want to kind of check that the stock, you know, the, the technical picture of the stock might look fantastic. But actually, when you do a little bit more research on it, you think, do you know what? It's, it's, it's a bit of a laggard. I probably, you know, maybe I should look for something else. And it's putting together those little bits of information that will give you the best uh, um, a trading opportunity. So I'm not sure I'm going to finish it all today. I'm going to actually going to do it in a, in, in, in a more sort of a structured way. I'm going to start. So bear with me. There's going to be a lot. Uh, take a note, have a pen, have a piece of paper, write down these, uh, the, these, these, um, uh, these um, resources that I've come up with and in fact the stock that and what I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to make a little sort of portfolio of stocks for these sessions based on the different kind of things that we're looking at and then we can have a kind of narrative for them as we you know as we as we go um, as we go forward with the sessions and one of the stocks I have is a h a h T. And I'll show you how I run it through the, the various websites that I found. But 
very interesting about AHT. The reason is I really liked it because it's had this really nice break from the volume point of control that we can see here. Uh, we've had this, uh, we have this move lower, but the candle which really caught my eye was yesterday, was this one. It's a very, uh, it was a, a, a nice big wide uh, down candle, but it had a wick to the bottom of the candle, a lot of volume underneath it. It also stopped at a very key uh, volume support level. These support and resistance levels, these bands that we have here through the VPOC indicator, they are delivered by the indicator. And you can, I must say 100%, but when the price stops at one of these bands at the outer edges of the price action, you can kind of say, do you know what? It, it, something is going to happen. You're going to get a reaction. And that's what, and looking at that uh, yesterday, I thought, do you know what? I reckon that's going to go up to date. And do you know what? It has gone up to date. And if we go to the, let's see, the 10 minute chart, let's have a look. Here we are. There we are. And here we are. This is this is today. These are the session breaks, as we can see here. This is how it ended yesterday. It, uh, with all support and resistance, you have to have a little bit of leeway with it, you know. But you can see that it really hugged the. Uh, was it twenty? Uh, it was only two dollars twelve actually for a for a very cheap stock. It's remarkably um, consistent in price action. This is the other thing I was looking for. I don't want a stock. Masses of gaps everywhere. Masses of well, I just want a stock that I can show VPA consistency. You know, respects kind of levels. And you know, when we look a little bit more detail into the background of the stock, you'll understand why I looked at this and I kind of really really liked it right i'm going to pass to david because it's going to take me a couple of minutes just to sort myself out Are you okay to take over david uh, yes. is that all right <laughs> get a different voice hi everyone welcome back sorry not not quite so um manic as it was at the end of the last session apologies about that uh, might need to space them out a little bit more it's a bit tight as we always ever run anyway um i'm on a stock chart two and this is on multiple time frames and really just to this is actually one that um let's go to this one this is actually a stock that uh we wrote about i think early part of this week actually um h band financial services market and really just to show you that it uh, from an intraday perspective at any rate um this could be anything. It happens to be a stock, but it could be an index future, could be a commodity, could be wheat, corn, could be a currency. It doesn't really matter. It's the principles of trading are exactly the same, whatever it is you're doing. Um, I've got the trend monitor on here. The reason that um, we particularly like this stock, just move the chat box out of the way. This is on this is on the weekly, and as Anna said, obviously this is financial services, banking. Um, you want to know what that sector is doing, and in terms of, I'm sure Anna will cover it anyway. But in terms of sectors, there are a lot more than you would imagine. There are hundreds of, there are primary sectors, there are subsectors, there are sub sub sectors. You know, it goes on and on. So it's always a question of understanding, uh, in terms of what you are doing whether you're an intraday trader or whether you're an investor is at least having some idea of how that particular sector is performing and interestingly just divert for a moment in terms of the forex program it's also something we cover there in terms of economic cycles because economic cycles are such a huge part of the rotation of stocks and which stocks and, and sectors perform particularly well at certain uh, turns in the economic cycle, which in turn obviously has an, a direct relationship to interest rates also and inflation and everything else. So it all, it is all interrelated in some way or the other. But this is one we like. The reason, sorry, the reason we liked it was particularly, um, again, it's one of those stocks that doesn't it doesn't whiz about. A lot of intraday traders, I know for a fact, particularly stock traders, will look for volatile stocks. They'll look for those stocks which really whiz about all over the place, um, both intraday and longer term. Fine, you know, it's it's whatever suits your particular approach to the market. But the the this is on the weekly time frame, and the reason we liked it is because it's 
it's it's relatively straightforward in terms of price action it's relatively measured you can see the buying that came in here what you're always looking for is you're either looking for very low levels of volume or high levels of volume and associated price action and you can see the anomalies here instantly you've got a narrow spread candle but you've got a, a heap of volume in fact the highest volume on this particular time frame and how far back it goes fair away so that's the highest volume so you know if that stock is going to sell off strongly then clearly it's being bought at that particular point because if that was a heavy sell then this candle would be way down here somewhere because it's the widest it's the highest volume and therefore you would expect the volume to be that much greater than any of these or that you can see the volume on that candle is not quite as probably a bit over half but you get the general picture so this narrow spread candle is a real strong indication that you've got some very very strong buying under that particular candle and therefore it's very unlikely that it's going to return to the volume point of control it doesn't tell you that this is going to continue or when it's going to continue but what it tells you is there is strong buying and at some point this this trend that started to develop here will actually continue i don't know whether these levels were on at that particular time they may or may not have been depending on how far the price action went back at that particular point so that's anomalous you then get the uptrend you've got a volatility trigger on a weekly candle which is unusual um, and you're expecting some reversal price action which you get but then you get the same anomalous sort of price action again narrow spread candle ton of volume coming in under it so you know what is that telling you again well it's telling you this is not going to sell off very strongly uh, it's either going to congest or we're going to see a continuation of the trend because this has to be buying in the same way this was buying and on up we go then we get a little bit of weakness coming in here under the uh, the up the up candle get some selling coming in here but then what's happened over the last three weeks all of these candles have got wicks to the downside so what is that telling you well it's telling you the market at some point during that that weekly period went down to where is it 15 20 odd um, and then recovered so there must be decent buying in here again there's a wick to the lower body smaller I accept but again you know there must be buying in here so this is really telling you this constant support if you've got the inverse of that if for example these were all poking up to the upside and you had uh, wicks to the upper body on that particular range of candles that will be telling you that yeah this market's looking weak it's not looking particularly good but the fact you've got three of them here with with clearly you know the, every time the market falls it, it's it's bought again it falls it's been bought it falls it's been bought looks as i got the same going on this week you know it's fallen to 16 or whatever it is now it's being bought again that's what you're looking for and you know that's part of i guess candle patterns it's also obviously part of vpa and looking at stocks and when you when you look at stocks very quickly you can whiz through them almost like you might flicker might you like you might go through a pack of cards very quickly looking for a particular card you know the sort of patterns you're looking for you're looking for sources you're looking for this sort of buying you're looking for you know lots of accumulation or if you're looking to sell you're looking for lots of distribution you're looking for particular shapes and particular structures of charts and and it's that sort of concept that you're looking for the whole time but that's the reason we chose this one because it just looks nice and you get the little reversals but you get buying little reversal but you get buying little bit reversal we've got more buying coming in so you know and we're coming up to the top of the volume point of control here at uh, 17 and beyond we've got low volume node up there as well and then obviously to to extend that you go down onto the monthly and see what the monthly chart looks like and how the volume point of control extends out in terms of a longer term duration for this particular stock maybe holding it for longer term so that was just a little bit of background on that stock and that's what's happening on an intraday basis you know you're back to looking at uh, the trend monitor what's it doing across the time horizons pretty bullish at the moment moved into a bit of sideways here on the faster time frame this is on three minute got a uh, pivot up here and of course when you get these big volume spikes it does make it quite awkward to to look at the the volume in context i've really got to pull that out you know almost off the screen it's it, there we are um and that then gives you a a much clearer view of the volume you know relative without that distortion by having a large volume bar so if you get a large volume spike somewhere it's a, you know pulling the chart out that way because then you start to see things like for example this little three candle arrangement here we've gone from it's not a huge move um, but nevertheless it's perfectly tradable as 30 to, to 40 42 but look at the volume it's fallen away 
So it's no great surprise to see this move into this, this uh, congestion phase. It's not to say, you know, this doesn't suggest that this is just going to go that and vump all the way back down to the volume point of control. All it does is it tells you that that buying interest is waning for the time being. And therefore, don't be surprised to see, you know, this sort of price action congestion, maybe a bit of selling. And you've also got to accept the fact that uh, within this sort of price action here, there is going to be profit taking because there are traders in there. They've jumped in early. They've seen it rise. It looks nice. Thank you very much. I'll just close out and close, you know, take my profit off the table. So almost inevitably, there is going to be some pause point, a little bit of congestion, some minor reversal as profit taking takes hold. And then you just have to wait and be patient. Looks as though it's going to push higher. These are not anomalous in their own right because you've got narrow spread candles. So the fact you've got small amount of volume with them, you know, they're in agreement. There's no real anomaly there. It's not simply a case of looking at low volume and saying, oh, it's anomalous. It isn't anomalous because the spread of the candle is very narrow and therefore you don't expect to see much volume under there. And, and you know, that's that's all part and parcel. It now looks as though we're going to try and push higher up to 1642 and maybe get away from this region. Um, and oh, I'll just pull this back again because it looks a bit silly on that size. There we are. There we go. But you get the general idea. You, you don't get, I mean, you can see it here, but you see it much more clearly just by getting rid of this candle here. This is all the pre-market stuff going on. Can I pass back to you? Let me pass back to Anna. Hold on a minute. Oh, let me just have a quick look at the indices because um, we looked at those earlier on. This is on the three. And as I said, the, you know, we've got anomaly here. We've got the NQ falling. We've got the YM and the ES trying to rally. And what's interesting now is it's the NQ is starting to pull the ES down and it may well pull the YM over as well. And it could be an opportunity to, to go short uh, and take an opportunity to the downside, having seen this nice rally early part up to the VPOC. Interesting. I'll pass back to Anna. Right. There's actually quite a lot that I want to cover and it covers all sorts of things. But let me just go to Finviz, first of all, because Finviz was where I actually started about three or four, four or five sessions ago. And then I kind of got rid of it. I thought, oh, Finviz is not going to do what I want. But in fact, having spent a little bit more time on it, I think Finviz may be a good start in terms of an analysis of the individual stocks once you've kind of picked them out of the sector and the uh, the, the index maybe. This is AHT and wow, AHT. In fact, let me just have a look at the at this, this. You've really got to see this, right? AHT was. Let's have a look back on the monthly chart. At one point, it was $140. It's now two. It's quite extraordinary. Um, <laughs> it's a bit of bad luck. Um, yes, exactly. And this is goes to prove that, you know, stocks can go to zero. But it, well, when we look at the metrics for it and when we look at uh, the actual traded volume for them, for it, you'll, I think you'll be very surprised. Now, clearly, uh, it would have been, it's part of the hospitality industry. So clearly it would have been affected really badly by the pandemic. And we can see here, uh, this is, uh, in fact, uh, this is, where are we? This is the monthly chart. This is, this is last year. But in fact, the stock was on the skids pretty much since uh, November 19 as we can see here this is really the trend lower and we can and we can know it's the trend lower because we've got the the trend monitor telling us so but what's interesting about the monthly chart is it is actually at the volume point of control uh, the volume point of control the volume point of control is is acting as a massive support for this stock and what is also interesting if you look at the volume that's going in at this particular price level uh, because inevitably a lot of investors they look at this and say oh my god this this stock was $140 and it's only $2. Oh, it must be a bargain. Well, there's probably a reason. Maybe there's a reason why it's $2, but that's that's an investing narrative. Let's keep away from the investing narrative at the, at the for the time being. But I just wanted to give you some a little bit of context for the price action that we are looking at the moment. And certainly if this stock is going to climb anywhere near to the, you know those highs of $140, it's going to need 
never mind about this volume, it's going to need a ton and a half of volume. But again, back to the daily chart that we were looking at, and when we're looking at that, that support, that volume support level, which is here. This is from, uh, as I said, this was yesterday's down candle with the wick to the bottom. There's clearly buying coming in there. But what's interesting, if we look over to the left of uh, this chart, you can see that it's actually quite an important support level because it has provided support in twice in the past, moved up, except it's come back and tested it. You know, nothing goes up in a, in a, in a straight line and it may not, you know, it may not go very high. Well, I know where it's going to possibly be aiming for this week because I know I've got the S3. What's also interesting about this section of this chart is if we go right back here to this massive volatility candle, those of you who come along regularly will know when we looked at GameStop, sometimes when you have these massive volatility candles, there's racking about, you know, you think a lot of traders try and jump onto that momentum and, you know, they just you know, they try and play the momentum, if you like, the, the volatility. Sometimes, you know, you can catch it. Brilliant. You know, go for it. But what the volatility candle also does, certainly one of this range, it also gives you some more support and resistance levels that the, that the market will respect moving forward. And because it's such a massive one, we had a similar one on gold last, I think it was last year. And, you know, gold then traded within the spread of this, uh, of that candle for, for weeks. This is going to carry on until we have, you know, a break to the top or the bottom. That doesn't mean that the range on the day is, is going to be insufficient for, you know, for you to take a trade, that's a, that's that's an that's a that's a separate issue. But it's just interesting that even if you're a day trader, is to look back on the chart and see how the uh, how the price action is structured in terms of support and resistance based on volatility. So we you know we have also support and resistance based on volatility. So that's that. So that that one there. Getting back to this particular stock. I'm actually going to do this slightly backwards, but anyway, no matter. And I'll be going over different elements of these in subsequent um, uh, webinars. And I think eventually I'll probably do a kind of summary of everything. So as I said, if I'm, if I'm you know, jumping about a bit, just bear, bear with me. This is Finviz, which you is a, is a screening. Uh, it's, it's a screener. It's a free one. If you sign up, as I hear, I'm signed up. You don't get all the ads flashing all over the place. Um, the, 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 this is still free, by the way. You either use the one with all the ads all over the place, but this is really tedious. But if you actually sign them and give you give them your email, um, you get this version. You don't get all the functionality, but it's at the moment it's good enough. I might even pay for it because it's really very very reasonably priced. You then have. Um, various screening windows now obviously the thing is about screening you've got to know what to screen for, what to screen for that is what we will work to in uh, subsequent uh, by the end of this little uh, section of uh, series of webinars that I want to do um, I just want to give an, an overview today why I looked at this stock and how you can use Finviz. Now, Finviz, as I said, you can use, you can uh, uh, screen on technicals, and as you can see, uh, fundamentals, you can put all your uh, your values in there, as I said, but I don't want to do them at the moment because what I was, uh, what you can also do is you can then just uh, input the ticker itself and you will then be able to do a quick run through of, you know, the history of this stock, the, um, you know, just where is it in terms of its metrics, et cetera, et cetera. And also the all important uh, metrics that you need to, I think you need to be aware of for day trading, which is essentially um, what the relative volume is, how much volume is traded in the particular stock, because a stock that hasn't got a lot of volume going through it, probably going to be more volatile, might be good, might be bad. But if you know it's got some a lot of interest in it, then it's going to be a little bit more stable. And we can see it's stable because 
it doesn't have, you know, apart from this huge volatility candle that we saw here on, on the Ninja Trader chart, it's kind of, you know, it's been moving sideways. It then broke low. It broke out of this uh, uh, sort of pennant that we have here. And now it's trying to find this base, which corresponds with these two points that we have here. But let's just see what the what the overview of this. Of it. So you just work your way through. So basically, we know it's hospitality. Um, and it's uh, the it's uh, hospitality, but it's actually in they they've actually put it in uh, the real estate. But we know it, but it's the hotel and motels. Well, we know the problems that that industry had yesterday. But this stock was having problems long before the pandemic. I think the pandemic was the kind of um, you know kiss of death for it. Uh, it's obviously the U.S. This is the market cap. It's 232.82 million. Not huge, you know, it's billions. And this is the price at the moment of 231. And this is the volume. Now the volume is actually quite, quite high. The the, uh, the trading volume. Um, in terms of what you should be looking for, there's all sorts of different um, opinions on that. Some people will say you should only look at stocks that, you know, are doing half a million uh, a day, as it were. It's it really is it, what it actually boils down to at the end is you can get some tremendous moves in penny stocks, in pink sheet stocks that don't have a lot of volume. In fact, sometimes when there's low liquidity, you actually get bigger moves, but you've got to you've got to ride that tiger. And, you know, if you're confident in it and you're on the very fast time frames then go for it. But if you want something that's a little bit more steady, you really need to look at a stock that is actually, you know, trading um, in a lot of volume going through it on a daily basis. Then you look at the, uh, the value. Yes, I know I do have to upgrade my my uh, my 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 finviz experience which i probably will do uh, i'm not going to go through all these these numbers um because i think for day trading they're not actually uh, particularly relevant i think they're certainly going to be relevant for uh, investing we're just looking at the um, at the day ones um the the three that if I were an investor, this is what I'd be looking at. I'd be looking at uh, return on equity, a return on investment, and return on assets. But um, you know, again, for day trading, I would say you know, you know, interesting. But what I suppose what is interesting, if you get a stock and you have some very good numbers on return on uh, return on investment, return on these three, then that's kind of telling you it's a good stock. So if it's a good stock for investing, possibly it's a good stock for trading just something to uh, think about and you've got to ownership it's quite interesting uh, this is the kind of float that's uh, the these are the outstanding shares and this is the float we've talked about low float shares shares that have a very large float a large percentage of their uh, of their stocks of uh, a float are floating they are more difficult to manipulate this is why the pink sheets move so much because there's not a lot of uh, stocks, so and they tend to they tend to move around. Then you have to, what percentage of the float is actually short. Now the reason um, it's not a lot; it's less than less than one percent. Some traders like to have a very high uh, 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 number for the uh, the amount of shares that are shorted on the float, because it means the stock is. Um, it could be subject to a short squeeze. And the most famous example of that is obviously what happened on, in GameStop. And, you know, it blew out uh, a couple of hedge funds, which is, you know, good for them, basically, the traders that, that did that. But this is not, this is not, uh, you know, huge, uh, basically. Then you've got the, uh, you, the absolute ratio. The ratio is not particularly high. Then we look at performance. What have we got here? Uh, yeah, well, it's got the, what the volatility is. Um, you tend to look at beta. Um, if it's got a high beta, it's going to be uh, volatile. But I chose this stock, as I said, because it's just steady and it's got volume going through it. So if you want to day trade it, it's not going to, you know, you're not going to be exhausted by the end of a move. It's going to move in a fairly steady way. Technicals, where are we? The, the, one, I'm, the one metric that I am looking at in particular four stocks. It's actually looking at the RSI. Um, we use we use strength and weakness very much in Forex. Those of you who are in the program will understand uh, overbought and oversold. There isn't really the equivalent in in um, in stocks because stocks have a bias to the long side. Stocks are bought for investment. No one buys a stock because it's going to sell off. Everybody buys a stock because they want it to go higher. 
So one of the things we're 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 sort of debating ourselves is with our with our indicators is where we can come up with some kind of indicator that will you know picks this up in in some way and looks at how we could graphically represent this. There is a standard indicator on the uh, on most platforms, and you know people say oh when it gets to ninety oh I've got to sell I've got to sell but no because as I said stocks excuse me, have a bias to the long side. So if you see a high RSI in a stock and it's supported, as I said, by the return, it's a strong stock. Yes, it will have a correction, but possibly not, certainly not as the sort of corrections that you'd be looking at in um, in Forex, for example. I mean, Forex is great in a way because it's a market of mean, it, you know, it is a mean reverting market. It goes up, it oscillates, it goes down. So you, you, you know, you buy, you sell, you buy, you sell, et cetera, et cetera. Stocks, you have to have a different mindset. And the mindset is nobody buys a stock for investment with the expectation that it is going to, you know, to sell, because it's going to sell off. Of course not. You know, it doesn't work like that. Right. That's the custom one. The, the charts. Here we go tickers stutter, basic we've gone through that right these are some of the numbers here that you can have a look at this is uh, the short float this isn't the one with the uh, relative uh, uh, relative volume that comes under yes the relative volume is 1.85 not huge but it's enough to be of interest if you like to you know some traders like to look at relative volume that's the basically relative volume is the volume that is actually going through on a on a daily basis it's more than the average basically again this is a metric which is there's lots of different ways to calculate it and it's we're looking at perhaps a way of uh, of um, coming up with a um, sort of kind of indicator and what have you but that's for the future the rsa here is got down at 35 the, the the two levels that a lot of traders look at is 70 and 30 or 80 and 20 now you could say perhaps it's got more downside yeah potentially you know it could go even even lower but given what we saw on the um on the charts you know I saw that buying coming in yesterday. This is the kind of conversation that you have with yourself. Now, this is really important. This is the news. And this is what really caught my eye because this little bit, this is from the 7th. Our options traders betting on a big move in Ashford hospitality. And the, the mere fact that the options market is kind of sniffing around is interesting. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Now, I'm not going to go off to the options market and have a look at this in more detail because I don't want I haven't got time in this particular session. But that is certainly that caught my eye, as it were. And I think, well, you know, are we going to go for a, is it are we looking at a short squeeze? It will be interesting to follow the narrative for this stock as we move through these sessions. What have we got? And we've got the snapshot, and I think we've just got some stats there. Oh, yeah. Come come to I will. I mean Fizbit, it's it's $25 a month. Seriously. I mean, for $25 a month, I think it's I think it's brilliant. But like everything else, you've got to understand how to use it. The help function on Finviz is pretty good. But even so, if you're not familiar with these particular terms, they're not going to mean an awful lot. And like everything else, you've got to know which of the metrics to apply, um, depending on what you want to do. So if you're an investor, some metrics, the relative volume may not be particularly interesting. And uh, so, you know, it's it's interesting up to, up to a point. Now, then I thought, great. But what I actually want, because uh, we talked about sectors, is I really want to know a bit more about sectors. And I just so thrilled to come across this site. It's called csimarket.com. And it's absolutely brilliant. David says, as David explained, there are sectors and sectors and sectors. And as an investor, what you want to do, if you're looking to invest, is what you want is you want to see what sector is doing well. What are the good, you know, what are the strong stocks in that sector and possibly investigate whether to buy them or not. As a trader, you kind of want to find the same information just because you're not going to hold it for a long period of time. You want to find out what's strong, what's weak, you know, what's, you know, what's doing well, what's not. It's, it's, another, it's another way of filtering using sectors. 
However, just before we go to that, there is another site that I came across, which is even more cool, which is this one. It's called novelinvestor.com, and it has the most brilliant uh, heat map of sector performance. This is the S&P 500 sector performance since 2007, and it's really fascinating. It's also There's also a heat map for the different uh, markets. And you look at, because what we're looking at at 2020, so what sectors were at the top and what sectors were down at the bottom? Because if a sector in 2020 is down at the bottom and the worst performing sector in 2020 was actually energy, what you could say is, well, that was at the bottom. Is the market now ready to buy this sector and the stocks within that sector? And you can see energy has had a pretty ropey, um, uh, you know, performance. It's been bottom 2020, 2019 and 2018. And going back, as you see here, and it's such a cool tool. I think these people are just genius. And I have to send them an email and thank them for all, because this takes a lot of them a lot of time and effort to put together and if you were trying to do this yourself you can forget it then at the top you've obviously got well what are the sectors that have been outperforming you know the market and obviously this is information technology and it's obviously the growth stocks it's your apples your facebook's the alphabets etc cetera, etc cetera. and you can see when they were at the top of the pile. They were there uh, last year. They were there in 2019. Uh, Not the healthcare was at 2018 and so on and so on. And you can honestly, you can spend hours on this. If you're fascinated by this data, which I am, think I'm a bit of an anorak, David, a bit of a data uh, geek. Um, this tells you so much because it can give you a hint of what maybe is you know, coming up in the following, you know, this year, as it were, and you can then track the, the performance. Now, healthcare is quite interesting. Healthcare has a bit of a, a checkered history, if you like. I mean, last year, it was kind of in, in the middle. Where did the S&P itself come do? And, as, you know, with the sectors. So go and play around with it. You've got uh, real estate down here. And interestingly, financials. Financials, as I said, they've got one product, the banks, they've got, in, you know, um, interest rates, um, debt, 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 debt. So maybe financials is, you know, one to go and explore. So that was great. Saw that. Fine. Now we have to go and look in more detail at. I know it is three different sites, but I haven't yet been able to find one site that actually combines all this information in one, I, I just haven't, and I doubt whether one exists. Well, I mean, I suppose if you subscribe to Bloomberg, you would, you could, but then in, even a Bloomberg terminal or a Metastock uh, program, you you kind of have to put this stuff together yourself. So you know, go for go for the free stuff first. Right here we are. Where are we? We have these are your the sectors. Here we are. And you have your, they come down here and what have you. But the really cool thing about this is, where are we? Let's go and have a look at financial. Looks like you can click on the financial sector. And you have these different tabs up here. So let's have a look at a performance. Hopefully, if I can remember, this is. And this is the financial, and this is what we mean by subsectors by subsectors. And you can see here, it then gives you the most amazing breakdown of. Now this is where this is where um, I think this is where old AHT is down here somewhere. We can we can double check this. Now this is the sector performance, and clearly what the, it's not in any. The only thing about this, it doesn't um, it doesn't give it a it doesn't grade them. So you have to sort of look down, but it's not terribly tedious. So. What it also does is it gives you obviously a year to date, 90 day, 30 day, five and one day. And just as we look at multiple time frames on charts, you can look, this is a multiple time frame for the fundamentals. So you look at this and you think, right, well, what sector has year to date, it's gone up 22, 13, uh, 1.1, 2 point. So you could say that sector is in a trend and the trend is up. Uh, 
is it worth exploring? So you click on that. And this is fantastic, this site. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I just got so excited over it. Then it comes up with the stocks that actually make up this sector. And what you can see immediately is that although the sector is strong and it's been in an uptrend, it's the, it's the um, you know, the, uh, the individually, not, you know, it's not equal. Uh, the worst performance is Swiss Credit Suisse, but I think they've been caught by um, uh, the, the guy Huang. I think they have been absolutely, um, you know, they are in deep, 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 deep trouble. So you could say, you can look at this in different ways. You can say, well, is that a good short? Assuming, you know, credit, there is a Credit Suisse um, version, you know, something on the, on the, on your platform. Or you can look at, um, say, let's say Franklin. So Franklin on is going up. Five days, it had a, a, a pullback. It had a pullback. Overall, the trend is higher. It's 22.29 uh, up on year to date. Up, up. That was a, like a little, so you, the reds, you can see like a little pullback. So if we're going to, I haven't looked at Franklin. I'm just picking this off. And you look at that and you say, OK, Franklin, let's have a look. Let's turn that to candles. There we are. And you look at the candles. I, I can actually put this, I can pull this up on my Ninja Trader chart with, with the indicators on it. But you can see here, you know, it, the, the consistency, you get so much information. You'll get the, you know, when the, uh, the earnings, of course, we're in earnings season at the moment. That always has a big impact. But it gives you a view of what the chart actually looks like. So let's, I mean, this is purely, you know, spontaneous. Let's have a look. Let's put Ben in here, see what happens. Ben. ben. My, my son, our son-in-law is called Ben. He's very sweet. Let's move to a 10-minute chart. Let's have a look here. Mm -hmm. There we are. Well, it had um, it was at the volume point of control in congestion. Then it had a really nice, a really nice move lower, straight down to our volume support. And it's had a bit of, you know, it's having a bit of a, 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 a comeback day today. But this is how you could possibly, you know, start thinking about your stock selection, obviously on the charts, but also bringing in those other, other elements, which are the fundamentals, uh, the metrics, what metrics, we will cover that in more detail, uh, you know, gradually as we go along in the series of, uh, in this series of webinars, and also the related markets, the related markets in the sense that, well, you know, this is a, a financial, you know, Franklin resources, you can then put, go back to, let's go back to, there we are, next thing is you go back to Finviz, put it in here, I think I have to start a new, no, it hasn't, I haven't quite got to grips with this, so I'll have to do it next time. I think I have to start from scratch. Let's have a look. Let's try this, this panel. There we are, we did it. Right, so you've got the overview, financial asset management, and look, at this is what I said about the volume, over a hundred, over half a million, fine, not like the uh, the other stock valuations. Where are we? Do, do, do. Financial. Yeah, so they're not huge, they're not stellar. I mean, you know, they're all right. They're all positive, but not brilliant. Let's have a look. Ownership, uh, big percentage short. Yeah, volatility, do, do, do. let's have a look at that one. Technical. The RSI 52, kind of in the middle, not one one thing or another. Let's have a look. There we are. As I do, volume there. As I said, this is the first time I'm looking at these, so I can't really, you know, I've, I'd have to spend more time on it. Let's have a look at the chart. Or is it sort of in a in a kind of channel? It obviously came off this uh, the resistance up here. It's at 32. So to the downs, if it's got any more downside, or it certainly will certainly find some support down here in about the $20. What's the news on this one? Let's have a look. Franklin Resources under management, uh, month end assets. So uh, looking for, yeah. Uh, I, we haven't looked at dividends, obviously, because as I said, this is um, uh, this is for uh, for trading, but it has got a big, 
big short float, I have to say. That's quite a lot. Average volume is 3.6 million. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what the relative volume is. There we are, relative volume. That's quite low. That's 0.92. Yeah, I mean, for a day, I would say you'd I'd probably look for more than that. Right, I'm actually going to stop there. If you've got any questions on anything I've said, just drop them into the chat box or drop me an email, Anna at AnnaCoolin.com. But as I said, this is just the first run through of this kind of whole stock selection, looking at stocks. The technical picture is straightforward. It's VPA. It's now the fundamentals and also the related markets. And the related markets are the, you know, what other, what other influences are going to have an impact on this stock, um, um, you know, on, a, on an intraday basis or on a longer term basis. And that could be, as I said, what's happening in the bond markets. Is it is it a, a mining stock that's to do with commodities? Is it, uh, is it a bank? Is it going to be bond yields, et cetera, as a political uh, options market? Those are related markets. And, you, you know, it's exactly like our Forex program, you then put it together. And I think what we'll probably do, certainly not now, but in the sort of by the end of the year, we'll be looking to put this together to formalize it in a program that uh, you will be able uh, to obtain from us. Right. Thanks, darling. Wonderful. <laughs> just, Anna, just checking if you can hear me. Thank you, Keith. Much appreciated. Um, just move that out of the way. I'm going to wrap up in a minute just to um, have a quick round up, see what's going on. Uh, YM is carrying on up. It's uh, It's got through the, the five minute here, as you can see. It's trying to break away from the volume point of control here. We had a bit of weakness coming here. It's uh, And it's, it's what's interesting is actually holding the NQ up as well. So between them, that's the NQ. Um, which is, you know, a little bit bearish on the day, but the the ES and the YMR trying to hold that up, pull it higher. But certainly been a good day on the YM so far. Um, nice trading. And you can either trade the mini Dow or the big Dow, so it's either five dollars a point or fifty or twenty five dollars a point, um, whichever you prefer. Um, let's just have a quick look at uh, see what's going on in the market. Had a quick look. Call in on gold, see what's happening on gold. Okay. Um, yeah, as I said at the time, it looked a little bit little bit weak. The whole um, you know, the whole rally was was looking very um, just looking weak, wasn't strong. See the volume's falling away here on the uptrend, so it's not gonna go far. And it's probably gonna go all the way back down to the VPOC. Nevertheless, you know, it's tradable. Of course it is, everything's tradable. Uh, that's gold. I've got silver up here. I haven't got the softs up at the moment. Um, similar sort of issue on silver. We had a big fall on uh, on the volatility trigger there, and a nice reversal. So again, you know, it's nice and tradable. Just go and see what's happening on H band. Just to wrap up. There we are. Ah, we're up at 16.50 now. So nice little stock. You know, 10 cents gone up since we were here last. I think we were at 16.40. Now it's up at 16.50. Not scary, nice steady price action, uh, easily tradable, and again got trend monitor here, you know, helping to keep you in, moving through all the various phases, VPOC and everything else, and volume point of control um, below. So I'm just up onto the one minute here. It's very nice, you know, we move through this low volume region very quickly. It's what you expect to see. Whenever you get these low volume regions, as I explained this morning on the VPOC. That's where you expect to see the price action move through very quickly, move through quickly there, because there's nothing in the way to cause it to pause. If you've got price space resistance, fine. We haven't. We had some here. You can see it on the accumulation distribution indicator. Got through there into this low volume region. From a trading perspective, you would look at that and say, well, all I've got up here is some some volume that was you know probably over here at the time. So in terms of a move higher, yeah, that looks pretty clear. Not much in the way. Um, you know, expecting that to move higher, and indeed it has, and uh, you know, it will carry on higher. Looking for that to get towards $17 a share and on and up. There are earnings for this one, however, they are, I think, off the top of my head, 22nd, is it? Is it H Bank? Yes, 22nd, yes. I think, or 23rd. It was on the post anyway, something like that. So there are earnings ahead. There's always earnings ahead. You know, 
we used to heavily trade options and it's one of the big bugbears. If you're in the options market, then you've got to be aware of it. It's, there's very limited time when you haven't got an earnings season ahead of you somewhere, particularly if you're trading longer term as we were, we were trading monthly options. It's very difficult to, to time your positions to avoid the options earnings or earnings forecast and all the rest of it. It's always going on. It's repetitive. It's relentless as every quarter it comes around. There we go. That's us done for the day. Thank you so much for coming along today. Um, that's the post down here somewhere. There we go. It's the last one we did. Um, that's on Anna's site, annacooling.com. So you'll find all the books there and all the links to the various um, uh, uh, sites. In terms of the indicators, you'll find them all here at quantumtrading.com. That's MT45, Ninja Trader 78, TradingView, and TradeStation. Two versions of TradeStation TradeStation Global and TradeStation Securities. Um, on Ninja Trader 78, it's one license. I say this every time or try to at any rate. If you do invest with us, doesn't matter whether you've bought one indicator or a couple of indicators. If you then upgrade to another, uh, perhaps you want to upgrade to a full package or you want to move on to the education program, you will always get credit for whatever it is you spend with us. And another factor is that in, if you have the full package, you'll always get all future indicators free of charge. That also applies to TradingView at the moment because we're developing them. So if you invest in the TradingView package currently at $677, I think it is, as a full package, you will get all the other indicators we're currently working on free of charge and they're coming out in the next few weeks. That's the Matrix, the Array, Heat Map, VPOC, Accumulation Distribution, and the Ren two versions of Renko. So it's not a bad time to buy. As soon as they're released, then we will increase the package price and it will align with MT4 and MT5. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else. I um, can't remember. That. Yes, transferring from one platform to another. It's always free. We don't charge. We never have charged and never will. It's, uh, you just ask us and say, you want to move your case from one to another. We do it for you. Make it all happen. Uh, finally, that's the Forex program over at quantumtradingeducation.com. I know we've got some students here at the moment. The complete Forex trading program, I won't go through it in detail. It's huge. It's comprehensive. It's what you expect. And we've also bolted on the funded Forex so you can trade our money with no risk to you whatsoever. That's it. We will, uh, we're will we going to run and um, grab a cup of tea. Enjoy the rest of the trading day. And uh, thank you very much indeed for coming along today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, more next week, um, as always. So we will see you then. And thanks for coming along. And bye for now. <laughs>